Good day everyone, my name is Paula and I am from Nair and, and this is the Nollywood Study Center Media Artist Series. In this show, we get to chat with top Nollywood actors, mm -hmm. producers, yep. filmmakers, directors and other industry players. We delve into their experiences, challenges and successes and find out what makes them tick. This is a show you don't want to miss, so stick around as we get down to it. <laughs> First, you'd like to know who is Insect Person. Hi, Chuko from Naya. It's lovely to meet you. Um, I don't know what to say, but when I'm asked who is Insect, I'm just a girl from Insurubium, local government in a Kwaibum state, who's turned into an actress. And I'm not sure if that's enough to describe me, but I might not be a girl next door, but I'm just a girl. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Okay, and see, I'm Paula Okocha. Hi, Paula. So, how did your theatre degree, theatre arts degree, mm. shape your career as a film person? Truth. Truth. It gave me discipline. Mm -hmm. That's what it did. In, My, in University of Calabar? Yes. Okay. It gave me discipline when I came out to acting for film. Because when you are... As a theatre student, mm -hmm. you're told that the show goes on. You have no feelings apart from the work you're about to do. Um, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. And um, so you learn to kill everything just before you start work. And so, but in terms of acting for film, I think that I had the basics from a theatre degree, but I had to learn film itself. Okay. I just did courses yeah. to aid me. Okay. Um, so you started acting at the age of 18, and then after your graduation, you took a break to venture into other things, and then you made a comeback with the movie Reloaded in 2012. What was your motivation for the comeback into the film industry? Okay, let me put it this way. I think the story hasn't been told right. At 18, I was still in university. I was a student of University of Calabar. I hated acting, hated the stage. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't start acting then. I was just put on stage by my lecturer because I was threatened mm -hmm. that I'd fail. And I did it. I didn't want to be, but I read the course. It wasn't something that, it wasn't something that I, I thought I would become. And then, <laughs> And then, okay, let me put it this way. And then, what did I do? I had a show like this, mm. a breakfast TV show mm -hmm. on NTA Calabar. So that's how I used to earn money as a student. Mm. And then, when I finally graduated, mm -hmm. I found myself in front of a camera. And I doubled, doubled, but I wouldn't call it a comeback. I would call it me finally accepting that I was going to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Or an actress at mm -hmm. the time. That's when I did reload it. So how do you deal with movie scenes that are unseemingly conventional, like rape and scenes that have to do with nudity in Nigeria? Hmm. And <laughs> she localizes it, Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria. <laughs> okay. Personally, I'm not one for showing a lot of skin. Mm -hmm. I and when I say a lot, I, I'm very uncomfortable with those things. Mm -hmm. But some stories have to be told. Now, when you become a conduit, your body becomes nothing. But will it be shot tastefully? Those are the questions mm -hmm. I would ask. But would I, would I push the boundaries such that I would be completely nude? My answer would still be no. Mm -hmm. You don't need to see me naked to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And that's personal for me. Right. Some people say it's freedom for them. Some say that it's liberating for them. I just think, I don't think I'll feel that way. Mm -hmm. So it's a personal journey for me. But dealing with rape, um, uh, the, as, how do I say this now? Um, right. 
it's always nice to know experiences. It's always nice to read up on experiences. It's always nice to talk to people who have been in those in situations. Situation. And so that you can have like a recall, a memory recall. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, you can literally smell the things that they smelt when those things happened to them. Yeah. And that's, that's how I deal with those things. Right. We would like to know, which Nollywood actor have you enjoyed working with the most? Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> that's really not fair. But <laughs> I'd be, I'd try and say one. Oh gosh. Uh, even, when you say actor, do you mean male or female? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not fair. It could be a role model. Uh, role models? Someone, mm -hmm. Somebody you have worked with. I, I don't know about having a role model. I think my mother is my role model. I don't, I don't have any actors, one. Um, I really enjoy working with Femi Jacobs. Right? He's not... He's not... He's, he's probably not going to be... As some, someone might say, oh, Femi, oh, I might not have seen his work. But for me, that's the person who I enjoy working with. But there's so many others. How can I just mention one? You can mention as many as you can. Everybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so with the issue of cyberbullying and the net ETC, so how do you handle it, especially with the issues trending about you recently? What is trending, darling? The hysterectomy surgery cut you had recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're media students, so it would be weird if we don't mention that. Going from the angle of how do you handle the comments that come in, any negative comments? Are you emotional? Me? Yes. I'm very emotional. And so why are you feeling this pain? It's, you should take it as victory. You should never, never, ever feel, because what's funny is that it's hard to have made that decision already. Mm -hmm. And I've dealt with it. So... My coming out to talk about it was my final cycle of healing. And secondly, was for me to help many other young girls yes. and women who probably have gone through similar things. I've lost friends because of that. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they say we can't talk, which is okay. But I've chosen to speak up. I've chosen to speak about, about it. And do I know how to deal with cyberbullying? My answer is still no. I still don't get how people can be horrible to others. But at the same time, we need them to know our strengths. We need those people there. So they'll, they'll keep being there because they hide. Yes, yes. They have no power over us. So it really doesn't matter what they say to me. They don't do anything to me. Yes. And they shouldn't do it to you. Thank you very much for being strong. Thank you for... Thank you. So... Um yeah, like you said, thank you, and for encouraging others. So, um, from the pool of movies that you have children over the years, hmm. what movie <laughs> would you say is your best, and why? Why is that? <sighs> okay. I, I. It's funny. I was saying something today that every film I've done has been a part of my journey literally been a part of my journey. There's actually a story. There's actually a reason why I take a script. And so everything is based on experiences. And so I think I, I, I picked guilty pleasure the last time I was asked this question. And that's because, one, maybe because my sister wrote it. Mm -hmm. She co-wrote it, rather. And secondly, because it was a very difficult period in my life as well. And I was going through my, this was part of the journey. That is when my, I wasn't quite sure if, nobody knew what was wrong at the time. But I wasn't well. So that has led up until this point where I can tell my story. But Guilty Pleasures was the one film that um, I really did suffer physically while I was working on. So yeah, that's why. Then... Based on the Hollywood movie you featured in Lone Star Deception, how would you compare the acting in Hollywood against Nollywood acting and processes physically? Okay. Let's put it this way. Now, um, 
uh, acting is acting. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that we have a lot of more, we have more pressure here in terms of what we have to deliver. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us, we don't, we don't do a lot of, we don't do, um, what are those things called now? We don't do, um, I think they're called, uh, huh, um, cue cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love a cue card. I, <laughs> my brain's getting fried every other day. And so I would like someone to handle, you know, a cue card and then I can mm -hmm. take a peek. All you need really is to immerse yourself completely in the character or rather become one with your character. The lines are, they just come. Yeah, they, do. they just come. Yeah. So that's the difference, I think. And then the fact that you get trailers. Huh. And, you know, you have all that going for you. And everything is, but it's difficult here already. But we are a resilient people. Mm. With that, we're still working. With that, we're still number two. It mightn't be anything. But we do contribute to the GDP of our country. Yes, so, are. yes, I think we're great. That's all that matters. All right. So, Unsi. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to um, upcoming film directors and film producers? What advice would you give to them in, to be able to improve your I, I I normally do not like the word improve. To make better. I don't like make better. What I like is what contribution would you add to an already existing industry. And I say, be authentic. It doesn't come as easy as that. Just be authentic. You would find, it's like a big, it's like a puzzle. Nollywood is like a puzzle. And everyone will find where they fit nicely. As long as you do you, and you are authentically you, you will find a place. And there's also the part that's for people that are not authentic. That's so fine, it's the still part of the puzzle. It creates and makes this industry as interesting as it is. But the one thing you don't want to do is say to yourself, I am changing, I'm going to be the face that, trust me darling, art is art. You might think you're crying here, but I don't necessarily have to cry. It, it, it's, I don't know how to put it, but it's different. You just need to add to it rather than think you're going to better it. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so NC, we're yes. going to the end of the interview. And the final question is your perception of the PAU environment as a lens for filmmakers. Hmm. Okay, I'll be honest. First, I think you have a... Uh, there's something. I heard something today. Something to do with... You have freedom to speak in this school, don't yes, you? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You do? We do. Good. That's the first sign of great education. The fact that you can see what you feel. And I think that is what has brought me up to this point. That's how I grew up. My father did say, if you feel it, say it. And what else do you need? Nothing more. Nothing more. To be able to see how you feel. And not get judged for how you think. And that's what you have. So why would, I, I would come to school here any day. And that's the truth. Okay, I should be there. <laughs> And there should be a star here. And then I'd feel better. So that's what it is. Um, we have one more question. Okay. So you're about to give a talk to you know, all these young people who look up to you as an industry <sighs> player. If you want to be film director, film producers, filmmakers, what impact do you think um, giving talks like this, because you're a professional, what impact do you think giving talks like this can do to, you know, push them in the right direction and would you advise maybe your colleagues or other industry players to you know partake in giving such talks to young people? If you know what you're saying, yeah. You have to know something to give out something. You just can't. I, I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> so the thing is, um, if you've got something to say, you might as well say it. But the thing is, would it make an impact? That will be left for the person who's listening. Mm -hmm. But he who truly needs it will hear it. I never think that out of 10 people, 10 people would say, as I said, well, if one person is fine, mm -hmm. then I did strike a chord. And that's how it works. And that's how it should work. Mm -hmm. So um, 
talks. talks are important. I think people need to hear from people who are in the industry. Mm -hmm. Even if you think they don't know anything. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I, I promise, yes. Mm. It, can, it can happen. Because they're the students. They're the ones who are still studying. Mm -hmm. You're in industry. And so you're probably not studying everything that they're studying. So there are going to be technical things that you can't even remember. But do you remember an experience that leads to the technicality of that problem? Yes. There's no such education as experience, in my opinion. I think it's brilliant. And thank you for having me. Okay. Another um, question? Um, no. Okay. We've come to the end of the interview with Nsepe Etim. And we want to thank you so much for honoring our invitation and bringing your beautiful smile and your beautiful self here today. <laughs> Thank you for remaining an inspiration in the industry and also as a public figure. And I hope you keep being the best at what you do. I'll try. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank so you. On behalf of the students, we'd like to thank you for the talk about the guest the guest for Thank you for being here and for giving us your time. Please don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It's truly an honor to, to come here. You. Sometimes you never know that you can. I hope to see you again. Uh uh. <laughs> if you give me beans, yes. Oh, sorry. No worries, uh, the beans next time. Thank you, I had it today. It was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>